A reflection for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. From today's Gospel. And they bring to him one deaf and dumb, and they besought him that he would lay his hand upon him. And taking him from the multitude apart, he put his fingers into his ears, and spitting, he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he groaned and said to him, Epitheta, which is, Be thou opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke right. Today, Jesus performs a double miracle. Most of his miracles are one shot. There's the blind man, for whom he makes a lotion of clay from the dust of the road and his spittle. It's a stunning miracle with a huge impact. There's lots of people get to know about it, and it in fact becomes a point of theological and moral interest too. John's Gospel, the man himself teaching the Pharisees, says, since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? There was a theological and a moral impact. Who had sinned? What was original sin involved here? It was one shot. The Lord didn't have to heal the man's sciatica as well. Then there's the son of the widow of Nain in Luke 7. When he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a great multitude of the city was with her. Note again the big impact. And he came near and touched the beer, and they that carried it stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother. And there came a fear upon them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up amongst us, and God has visited his people. It's public. It's dramatic. It's very poignant, too, with the mother in her widow's weeds, the beer and the young man. Stimuli for faith? Of course. But not that we should think that such things are essential or come to rely on. But the issue here is the double healing in today's Gospel. And it has a significance. Common sense would say immediately, of course, it does. Profound deafness is going to make learning to speak very difficult anyway. We know that. And medically, we group ear, nose and throat together for a reason, don't we? But we're looking for the spiritual meaning of the miracle. That's how the early fathers always did. St. Gregory the Great, about this miracle, he points to the finger of Jesus, a point of power. He puts his fingers into the man's ears and on his tongue. Quote, what is signified by the finger of the Redeemer, if not the gift of the Holy Ghost? Why? Well, he quotes Luke 11. The Lord says, after he cast out a devil, if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, doubtless the kingdom of God is come upon you. And St. Gregory links it to Matthew 12. Christ said, if I, by the spirit of God, cast out devils, then is the kingdom of God come upon you. So if you put the two together, we can gather that the spirit is one and the same thing as the finger of God. Gregory isn't finished yet. He takes it that Jesus spits on his finger before touching the man's tongue. 
quote, saliva from the Redeemer's mouth means the wisdom contained in the divine word. Wisdom comes from the mouth of God after all. So when our tongue is touched by that wisdom which he is, it is thereupon made ready to preach his words. As for Epitheta, be thou open. The obvious point is that previously the man's ears were closed. So let's assemble a spiritual message for ourselves from this miracle. At the beginning at the outset, our ears are closed. We are not open to the word of God. Whether that is Holy Scripture, sacred tradition, or the magisterium. Being open is not the same thing as being ignorant, of course. There is a difference. Being open means we are ready to be influenced. There's a huge amount of ignorance about the Word of God in different forms today. We can see it in the prognostications of all sorts of people who should know better or who choose not to know better. We're not open to the Word of God. But our ears flap at the mere whisper of scandal about other people around us. And we drink in as gospel ha, what the latest insistent woke lobby group tells us is the truth about human nature, or rather about the lack of human nature, because they are hell-bent on wiping human nature away or the climate, or inclusivity. It's amazing. We would have thought by now we would have been sophisticated enough to recognize the limitations when it comes to social media, limitations about truth and objectivity. But no, our ears are open to it all. And when it comes to doctrine, the doctrine which saves of the moral law by which we must live if we are to be truly free and reach our proper end, those ear flaps are firmly closed. Well, it starts by faith. Faith in the Son of God. If our hearts are open to him, then our ears will be too. And then after that, the string of our tongue will be loosed. Today, we seem very tongue-tied about evangelizing. Finding converts would have been an earlier term, but oh, that's a bit too much, isn't it? The problem is that first we have got to allow the word to enter our hearts. Then there's something else we must note. The deaf mute was dependent upon his friends to bring him to Jesus. He couldn't even ask for himself. Perhaps he couldn't have heard that our Lord was in the vicinity, this great healer. Sometimes we have to go that far with our friends. Their ears are closed, and they certainly aren't going to ask we don't know what it is that keeps their ears closed. It may be, however, the same things which have kept us from hearing the word of God in the past, or maybe even today. How often the rejection of Catholic doctrine at root is a refusal to live according to God's precepts. We know better how to be happy. I am clinging to my way of life. Fear of what? For fear that Christ will heal me. For fear that he'll make me listen to how it is. Reality, not the delusion I'm living. You know how it is with children, don't you? They've grasped onto something that yesterday made them very happy. Toil some sort of game, 
and they've got to repeat it. It's got to be done the same way. And they get very upset if they can't. It's the same for us. To be good friends, good neighbours, we must bring each other to him. It's not a superiority trip. No, we need also to have our ears open. You know, what the world thinks we believe and live by is a travesty. That's why they don't want to follow Christ. They have taken this caricature and really it's because their image of the church and so forth is missing. It's missing the central figure. It's a bit like the bouncy castle. If, uh, if you come upon a, a field and there's a pile of uh, gaudy plastic lying dumped in the middle of it, and there's a machine, looks like a generator of some sort, and we, over here, and uh, there's a large tubing there and uh, some panels and so forth, you wouldn't, you wouldn't make sense of that. It's only when the pump starts, it's only when it is filled with, well, air, that we begin to realise what it is. It's a bouncy castle. Well, if it's not too disrespectful, we could say the same for the church. Unless, unless you see the Holy Spirit at work in the church, unless you Feel that finger of God on your ears and tongue, then you're not going to recognize the Son of God. Those around us don't know Jesus. Him comes first. Discover the Word of God. Then We'll get it right. The man spoke right after his ears had been opened. Another man who spoke right was St. Paul, wasn't he? And that passage from 1 Corinthians in today's reading is one of the most inspiring passages. 1 Corinthians 15. I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast. There's a rhythm there in the Latin. Quod et acepisti, in quo et statis, per quod et salvamini. See, anetis. There we have it. Receive wherein you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold fast. Stand as, well, the defendant or the witness in the box, by which you are saved, not by pastoral programs, whatever we might call them, not by condoning sinfulness, Accompanying is not a Catholic or a Christian expression. Not by downgrading the teaching of the church because it's embarrassing or doesn't sound inclusive. Not by the unworthy treatment of the host in man. The Lord opens our ears to let him. And then he loosens our tongue for a purpose. And that purpose is the salvation of the world. That is our goal. Pray that the words of St. Paul will be true of us too. His grace in me has not been void. Praise to Jesus Christ, now and forever.